Welcome to Book Talk. And today's book is Shining Brightly by Howard Brown. This is a memoir of resilience and hope by a two-time cancer survivor, Silicon Valley entrepreneur, and interfaith peacemaker. I'm your host, Anthony Morore. And I welcome to this show. I welcome you to this show. And I believe that we are going to have a great time as we discuss this book. Thank you, each and every one of you who's been watching, those who continue to share these uh, programs, these episodes with all your friends. And uh, those who, of, of you who give us the feedback, we really appreciate you. And uh, we look forward to a great time together. And don't forget to always get the books that we discuss. So today's book, Shining Brightly, I'm not going to talk it, about it myself. I'm going to have the author with us. So without taking one more minute, I'm going to introduce the author to you, Howard Brown. Welcome to the show, Howard. How are you? <laughs> Anthony, I'm terrific. I'm so thrilled to be here with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's such a great uh, honor to have you uh, here on our show, and we really appreciate you taking your time. And uh, we also thank you for writing a book and uh, presenting it to us. Now, to get started, we'd like to know who is Howard Brown? If you can be kind enough to tell us. Sure. So the, the, there's two answers. There's probably many answers, Anthony. But the first answer is that, uh, you know, I'm a I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a husband, I'm a dad. Um, that's that's what really matters in life, of course. But um, I am uh, absolutely trying to uh, <clears throat> make the world a better place. Um, I've been through some tough times, but everybody in life goes through tough times. So the, 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 the chance to be resilient and get back up again and help yourself and help others. Um, my, my book is not just a cancer book. It's a book about living a resilient and hopeful life and, and making the world a better place. And that's beautiful. And that's why I, I said we really appreciate because each and every one of us needs that because uh, each and every one of us have our down times. And then when we are down and someone reaches us uh, down to us and lifts us up or gives us the hope of a tomorrow, that's, that's worthy of uh, appreciation. And so we appreciate you. Now, can we maybe mention of uh, when you were growing up? How did oh, you, sure. where are you, where are you, where were you born and how did you grow up? Okay, so I, um, I was born in St. Louis, Missouri and I'm a twin. I have a twin sister who's five minutes older. Her name is CJ. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom uh -huh. had two, two at yeah. once. We, we immediately moved back to Boston suburbs. Uh, so Boston, Massachusetts. So my parents I grew up in a place called Worcester. It's hard to pronounce and say, but uh, we grew up in Framingham, Massachusetts, which is a suburb of Boston, about 20 minutes away and um, fairly normal childhood for the most part. Uh, you know, went to public schools, you know, did pretty good in school, was, was big into sports. Um, I love playing sports, mostly basketball, mm -hmm. and I was pretty good at it. And uh, Ended, ended up growing up there. And uh, again, we didn't have cell phones and we didn't have computers and we didn't have the internet. So it was a slower pace, right? So mm -hmm. it was different, you know. So I, I grew up, uh, born in 66. So I uh, grew up in the 70s and in, in, in a high school during the early 80s and then college in the later 80s. So mm. you know, it was great. It was great. We had everything we needed. We were, you know, we were, my dad worked three jobs, hardworking. My mom stayed home with the twins. And, um, we, we were our family unit. It was great. That's beautiful. Uh, we are talking of the ages that we are always hearing, the times that we used to drink water straight from the horse and we didn't get sick. <laughs> we, we didn't get sick, right? We played we outside. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, my mom, my mom is, Anthony, it's funny, when uh, I was playing like maybe down the street and the way that they called us in for dinner, for supper, they said, Howard, come home. And the other mom would say, Howard, go home for dinner. And then the other mom they would say, go home for dinner. That's how they did it. No cell phones, just screaming mm -hmm. from one house to the other. They get home for dinner. Mm. And that's, that's beautiful. And uh, I also happen to love uh, basketball. I was born about a decade after you were born. And uh, what was your favorite uh, stab uh, back then when it was your favorite uh, game to watch? 
So I, I actually, in, in Massachusetts, I started playing ice hockey. Okay. But um, I switched to basketball mm -hmm. because I did my Hebrew school lessons. So my parents switched me to basketball at age six and I've been playing. I fell in love with basketball and I've been playing ever since. And I will have to tell you that I have a, a whole chapter in my book on basketball. Uh, mm -hmm. It's my book. So uh, basketball, I call my happy place because everyone needs to find their happy place where they have no stress. They just have pure enjoyment, pure, you know, adrenaline, whatever they need to, to take care of their no worries. And so mm -hmm. I wrote a whole chapter on basketball. <laughs> That's how much yeah. I love basketball. Yeah. Now, right. I have to tell you, Anthony, Anthony, I'm a, I'm a Boston Celtics fan. So I, I grew up with the Boston Celtics in the 70s, John Havlicek and Dave Cowens, and then over to Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish. So uh, I, I was a 70s and 80s uh, Boston Celtic fan, and I'm still a, a Boston Celtic. I used to enjoy basketball when uh, Michael Jordan was at the top of it. And <laughs> those were great times. Great, great, yes. great times. Yeah, at this point, let me mention one or two people who have joined us. We have uh, Mindy. Thank you, Mindy, for joining us. And we appreciate you and uh, for appreciating Howard. And we also have uh, uh, Adam with us. Way to go, Howard. Your inspirational fellow watchers. <laughs> These are friends. These are good friends, yes. Yes, and th these are the hard names that you told us. Some, some names are hard to pronounce. We, we, that is Worcester. Okay. <laughs> Remember I told you it's hard to pronounce. It's called Worcester, and it's Worcester. Old English. Worcester, okay. Worcester, England, and it's Worcester, Massachusetts. It's, it's Old English. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. So growing up and then um, uh, you joined the workforce. What was your career, if I may ask? So I, I got very lucky. I, I started to go to a school for liberal arts, okay? And that was the wrong path for me. And I ended up choosing and transferring to a college called Babson College. It's in Wellesley, Massachusetts. It's the number one school for entrepreneurship in the world. It's a very small mm -hmm. school but they mm -hmm. teach entrepreneurship of all kinds and family business and woman owned business. And that's their specialty. And that's their number one, 30 straight years, US News and World Report. And I transferred to Babson and that changed my life because mm -hmm. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so I learned at Babson and I came out and I also wanted to learn about computers and technology because it was mm -hmm. just beginning in the late eighties. You know, the mm -hmm. Apple computer in 84 and, um, I, I ended up getting the bug. And so I, I joined a company called NCR Corporation. And then I ended up, uh, you know, moving more into technology. So it was amazing. And uh, Babson helped me with that journey. And it helps me today because I became a president of the Worldwide Alumni Association, 44,000 students in 127 countries because they're worldwide and uh, a trustee of the college. And so a lot of giving back to Babson. Babson runs commentary throughout the book because entrepreneurship, you know, changes economies, it changes lives. And uh, I'm very proud of that. But my career started in technology and computers, and then went to small startups. Startups, do you want to change the world? Do you want to bring something new to the world? And so that's, that's where I started. But um, mm. I, I'll, I'll stop there because I got interrupted pretty early on in my life uh, into my career, but we'll stop there. Oh, yeah, and, and, and I heard you say, I am still, but the, and my question was, uh, and I thought my question maybe was uh, biased because I asked, what were you? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, uh, you got interrupted, and maybe this is a point that is going to be very instrumental in this episode. What was the interruption? So at 23 and a half years old, I noticed a little mark on my cheekbone. And mm -hmm. I was driving out to uh, Dayton, Ohio for a big job promotion at NCR Corporation. And I ended up, uh, it took them a couple months to figure out that I was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is cancer, a blood cancer of the lymphatic system. So mm. at 23 and a half years old, I was told that um, I you know, didn't have a long, long life to live. Um, and I ended up moving back home with mom and dad to Boston, outside of Boston, mm -hmm. and going to the uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. And I started um, with chemotherapy, which is the uh, um, basically poison to try to cure me, and nothing was working. It mm -hmm. was really a, a very dark and uh, depressive time. I was in denial. Um, 
I went to my I went to my fifth year call, uh, high school reunion and everybody was you know d- depressed. They they thought I was going to die. You hear the word cancer, stage four. The, uh, Howard doesn't have much time left. Get it, you know get mm-hmm. your affairs in order. Pretty scary time at age twenty three and a half for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. here's the here's here's the miracle. And this is you're right. This is why people want to tune in and get the book. Right. Is that yeah. I had a twin sister, my twin sister. She was typed for a bone marrow transplant. That means her blood system and bone marrow was an exact match. Okay. So on May, on May 24th of 1990, they early in the morning, they removed bone marrow from her hip bones and they put it in um, a, an infusion bag and they cleaned it. And at 5 p.m. that night, they infused it in me. Mm. Now, when you infuse someone else's body part or blood into you, the body can reject it. The body mm. can reject it over time or potentially it can work. Well, in my case, her bone marrow saved my life. Mm. Her bone marrow That's saved good. my life. It's That's amazing. Good. It's uh-huh. a miracle, right? So it's great. So uh, uh, thank God for my twin sister, you know, CJ Brown Jingris, who, who was beautiful enough to give part of her bone marrow to me to save my life. And uh, that's miracle okay. number one. There's a few more miracles coming. Okay, we'll be ready to hear them. But uh, at this point, uh, we, we, we point to the fact that um, in your life, there is going to be that person who is going to, uh, to, to be used by God, so, so to say, to be a miracle in your life. And we are glad that your sister was this angel that was that you came out together from the I mean you came into this world together so that she can stand by you. What a blessing when your sister is by your side when you are going through some tough times. So and you beat that and you came out shining, like you're shining yeah. brightly now. And uh, then go on. What so- was the second one? All right, so there's this, so so then I started to what I call put Humpty Dumpty the old nursery rhyme back together again. I had to repair my life. When mm-hmm. you come from cancer, it is uh, everyone has a survivorship blueprint, and, and 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 no one are the same. I had to figure out how to get my life back, get healthy. So remember, I was broken emotionally, physically, mm-hmm. financially, in relationships. C- cancer breaks you down to your core. I had mm-hmm. to build up. So. I ran away to Los Angeles, California. I wanted warm weather, waves and sunshine. And I did rebuild my life. I went back to work. I met this young lady named Lisa Naftali, who became my wife. (laughs) Amazing. And I started another another miracle. (laughs) Yes, of course. Of course it was. Yeah. Yes. And so we, 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 uh, I got married in 1994 at Shutters on the Beach overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It was beautiful. I got my life back. Mm-hmm. God bless me. I got my life back. Everything mm-hmm. was going great. And uh, then I moved up to Silicon Valley. And, and here's another miracle. When Before I did chemotherapy in 1989, this doctor, Eric Rubin, who's my dear friend, okay, mm-hmm. he, now, he was a Harvard fellow at Dana-Farber, now works for Merck Pharmaceuticals in Philadelphia as a senior vice president of research and development. He told me when I came in to do chemotherapy the first time, he said, your, 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 your blood test, something's off. Your liver function test is high, but we're going to go to the cryogenic center. Well, I'm 23 and a half years old. They told me I'm going to die. I said, cryogenic, what? what? What is that? Well, it's the sperm bank. And I, he said, just go. You'll come back tomorrow. We'll do chemotherapy. I said, but you told me I'm going to die. He said, just go, just go. So I went and I deposited a, a sample. Mm-hmm. Well, roll the clock forward to 2001. We flew the sperm out to San Jose, California. It defrosted. We did in vitro fertilization, right? And they took the frozen sperm and defrosted it, put it in my wife Lisa's eggs. And we've got a beautiful, healthy daughter named Emily. In August of 2001, she was born. Miracle number two or three or four. It was amazing. So blessed to have my own daughter. Um, And she's now 21 years old and healthy and going to graduate the University of Michigan this year. It's amazing. Oh, that's another miracle. Now, it is. I ask this question. What came in the doctor's mind to suggest that? Well, you, that's did a you great... ever ask? Did you ever ask that? I did. Yourself? So I asked right away and he didn't give me a good answer. But mm-hmm. I went and saw him 25 years later. 
at a dinner with him and his wife, Kim, and I did ask him and we all started crying. <laughs> we started crying because we were so happy that he actually did it. He said that it was good doctoring and talking about se sexual reproductive health as uh, to our patients is something that we are trained to do and we need to do more and do better of. And he did it. And I am so blessed and thankful to Dr. Eric Rubin for having me do that because not only did I live, but I have a family. I, I have a beautiful daughter that's going to be able to give back to the world. It's, it's mm. really amazing. So that incredible, really. That's incredible. amazing. And, and since you've come out explicit and the listener may be having this question in his mind, uh, through the chemotherapy and uh, the treatments that you went through, did that render you unproductive, so to say? Yes, it did. So the, mm -hmm. the amount of chemotherapy, the amount of full body radiation I had in preparation for the bone marrow transplant uh, did. It uh, Basically, I, I can't have children. So that was mm -hmm. the one opportunity to be able to do that. If I had just done chemotherapy that day, we would have had to look towards adoption or a surrogate or some other way to make a family. Whoa, but instead, whoa. he told me to go. So it's amazing. It's incredible. Whoa, that's a miracle. It is. Oh, <laughs> can't imagine of that. Yes. Um, and then you kept on going and you're keeping on going. And we appreciate you that you're uh, going. Are we through with the miracles? No, we got more. <laughs> oh, so oh, we got oh. more. So my uh -huh. career is going great and I'm feeling great. And I'm in Silicon Valley. I'm in Northern California now. We moved from Los Angeles, uh, Southern California to Northern California. My daughter's born at Stanford Hospital. I'm working at startups, technology startups. I'm having great business success in my career. A couple companies went public and things are great. And I get a call from my twin sister. She said, I'm moving to Michigan. I said, you're moving to Michigan? She says, yeah, my husband got uh, transferred. And I looked at my wife who's from Michigan Mm -hmm. and her family's in Michigan, and my family's still in Boston, I said, let's raise our family together, have Emily be with cousins and uh, grandparents and aunts and uncles uh, in Michigan. So mm -hmm. in 2005, we moved to Michigan, and I was still continuing with technology, and we moved here, and it's a great place to raise a family, but the winters are very cold and snowy, like Boston, not as mm -hmm. great as California. But uh, unfortunately, in 2016, I went in for what's called a colonoscopy. And so a colonoscopy is something at age 45 here in the US that you get checked um, and they, they basically go check up the, up the, up the, the tushy, right? With a hose and a camera. And mm -hmm. unfortunately I woke up and they said, I found something and I was shocked. My wife was holding my hand. I looked up at the gastroenterologist doctor and I said, doc, everything's okay. He said, no, no, I found something. Well, I was stage three colorectal cancer, specifically mm -hmm. colon cancer in mm -hmm. june of 2016 again knocked down knocked down again um had to deal with you know everyone has to play the cards that they're dealt well i was knocked down again but this time i'm a father i'm a husband and i'd already been through cancer once even though it was 26 years ago so mm -hmm. this time instead of being a deer in the headlights and no computers and no internet and no cell phones i i, I knew what i had to do i became a marine a, a, an army soldier i had to actually fight this disease back and I started with uh, colon uh, resection surgeries and chemotherapy, and it didn't work. It didn't work. A year later, mm. I was what's called metastatic stage four colorectal cancer. And again, they told me, you don't have long to live. 4% chance of living 12 months. And uh, it spread to my liver, my stomach lining, my, my bowel. And they said, we don't know if we can save you. So again, it was very very, very dark time because I wanted to see my daughter graduate high school. Mm. She was a freshman in high school first year and I wanted to see her graduate. Um, I wanted to keep living, right? And mm -hmm. so I had to go back through chemotherapy and more surgeries. And I did a massive surgery in March of 18 where they cut me open. They took out all the cancer they could see. Uh, and then they poured hot chemotherapy inside me. And so far, that work so far. So I'm considered what's right now at this time, uh, two, almost three years, no evidence of disease at this time. So they, I have two more years to get to what's called remission, five-year remission period. But that was a miracle, miracle mm -hmm. number three or four, whatever the miracle count we're on. And um, I've so far 
I'm doing great. Um, uh, um, I wrote the book. We went from cancer to COVID. I, I dictated and wrote the book. And now I'm uh, an author, a podcaster, speaker, and, and trying to motivate, educate, and inspire. And I also, Anthony, want to say this. I am very blessed. I am very grateful. And I am very lucky. Wow. <laughs> and and we, are, we are speechless just by sharing your story. Uh, when did you, when exactly did you write the book? You mentioned about, yeah, COVID and cancer, okay. COVID and everything, things happen. What came, I mean, at what point did you decide now I'm going to put this into writing and I'm going to share my story? I'm glad you said it that way, put it into writing, because you have to know your strengths, right? I'm mm -hmm. a pretty good speaker, but I'm not a great writer. So I, I, my, my, my publisher said to me, let's write a book and leave a legacy. And I, I said, let me think about it. You know, I, I'm not sure. I'm healing from cancer, and I, I'm not sure, because I know it's going to take a long time. He said, oh, it'll take a year. I said, okay. Uh, but I called him back and I said, uh, this is David Crum of Front Edge Publishing and readthespirit.com. And I said to him, I'll do it on one condition. I'll write a book. I said, I'm going to dictate the book over Zoom. I said, I'm not a great writer. We're going to record on Zoom and I'm going to invite all the most influential and important people in my life. And we're going to tell my story. And mm. then we'll, those will become transcripts. Those transcripts will become chapters. And then I will finally have a manuscript. Well, I have to tell you, it took three years. I started October 19, uh, 2019, and the book just uh, about uh, two weeks ago went for pre-order on Amazon right now. So I actually have a book. Now you have a book. I and have this a book. Is shining brightly. Now, despite the darkness that may come upon your life, or you are going to find along your journey, you still have got that light inside of you and you're shining. And you're shining much more brighter than some of the people that have everything that they may be wanting in their own lives. Now, what an encouragement. What, a, what an inspiration that we have in Howard. This is beautiful. And, and, and another thing that I get to uh, draw from your story, uh, something that I've been hearing in the recent past, in the most recent past, is about coming with something good out of the pandemic that we've been through. Now, this book has come out during that period. I mean, that's when you put it into. And you don't use an excuse of not being able to write. You dictate your book and it's uh, transcribed and it's uh, put into writing. Oh, this is a beautiful story that you're giving us here. Thank you very much once again. And we can we can't thank you enough for taking your time, uh, using your life uh, to be a message to someone out there. So thank you. Thank can you. I can I just can, oh, Anthony? I, I thank you. I want to tell you that I feel that I'm shining brightly with you today because uh, you said it right. The book has light all through it. Because if we live a life of darkness. It is lonely, it is depressive, and we're coming out of COVID. We need to basically capture that light, our own light. Then we need to share that light with others to help lift them up. Then they will share with others, and then we're going to make the world a better place. So I appreciate you noticing that theme in the book because it's so important in today's world that we shine our light and then share with others, and then together we, we, we make this world a better place. That's, that's the theme of the book. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, we continue to thank all those people who've been around uh, with you and together with you. Mindy, yes, uh, Mindy says that uh, they are, we are supporters of you. <laughs> all, your, uh, all your friends, together with all your friends. And um, she tells us how you met uh, through your shared publisher, Frontage Publishing. Thank you, Frontage. By publishing for such a wonderful job that you did to uh, make uh, Howard's dream become a reality. We also have Adam who has some comments to make uh, in our show. He says uh, that uh, we are having our 10th bone marrow drive at Babs on October 1st with another cancer survivor, Chris Sherman. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's an alumni of Babson College and a friend. So Adam runs uh, bone marrow drives for uh, people with cancer that are looking for a match. It's a beautiful work. Again, more light, more beautiful light in the world. Yeah, thank you. 
And we also have, uh, you, you are blessed. I mean, Howard is blessed, has a, an, a, a, a countless friends that are in support of him and coming in. <laughs> we have uh, Susan Stitt, who's, who's uh, sharing, reminding us that the book is available at Amazon, just like you mentioned. Uh, and and the, the link has been shared there. We are going to share also in the show notes. Thank you very much. Uh, Susan, we really appreciate. And uh, we, we keep going, but before we go far, we'd like to know, for someone who's being interested in this story and wants to connect with you, even before he gets the book or she gets the book, how can they reach you? I appreciate that. So the best place is to come to shiningbrightly.com is my website. Okay. Now, so the book is the book, the hard copy, the paperback, and the Kindle version are available for pre-order. So pre-order is the marketing buildup to the book. On September 27th, the book will be shipped uh, to the, all those who pre-ordered uh, the, the physical book. Now, the Kindle will be sent electronically over email, and, and you can turn that on. Um, now, this is what I'm learning, Anthony. I will be able to send autographed book plates. Book plates mm -hmm. are stickers that you can sign. If anyone comes to my website that has ordered a book, I will mail them a personalized and autographed book plate just by sending your information um, in the contact area of shiningbrightly.com. So please come and talk to me. There's downloads, there's 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 uh, discussion guides and, and help me with the conversation. And uh, I, I would love it. Whoa. So once again, that's www.shiningbrightly.com. Connect with Howard and get the book. Now, all those promises that he's given you, you can't wait another minute. Just go there and do it. Thank you. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and we really appreciate you. And uh, this has been a wonderful time sharing with you. Uh, anything that you may want to share before we get off? So this book has three cancer chapters and they're tough, but my okay. book is a, a life lesson of resilience. And the final word I want to leave you with is hope, right? Mm -hmm. My last chapter of my book is called sharing hope. Mm -hmm. The reason is, is that hope like sharing a hug or sharing love, right? Or sharing a good deed. Sharing hope is what we, we need to cling on when you're knocked down. Okay, you can knock down from drug abuse, divorce, school shootings, lots of great negative stuff happening in this world. But without hope, we have nothing. And so I end my book with giving everyone in the world some hope because I needed hope. And people gave me hope. They prayed for me all around the world. They cheered me on and I felt it and it got me better. And I am still here today to spread more hope. Mm. And thank you for that, for spreading more hope. <clears throat> But before we, again we go, you've mentioned uh, some two words uh, that uh, maybe we can touch on. You talked about uh, faith. You talk about miracle and prayers. I mean, it's not I, I'm using now uh, the, the, the two words that you've used frequently, uh, miracle and prayer. Can you mention to us uh, what's your relationship and the relationship of the person who's uh, uh, hearing this with the faith, with the prayer, with the uh, miracle that you're talking about, you and how they can utilize that. So pe people say that I'm an inspiration, that mm -hmm. I've been able to beat cancer twice and to try to continue to uh, lead a good life and, 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 and uh, you know, heal the world as God is telling us to heal the world. Mm -hmm. But you have to have faith in something, okay? So yeah. whether yeah. whether you of the Muslim faith, the, the Christian faith, you're atheist, you're Jewish, Hindu, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you that my worldwide network prayed for me. Mm -hmm. They prayed for my survival. They prayed for my uh, feeling better just one day. I, I, I felt that. That helped me, okay, by taking in their light and their prayers and their cheerleading help, help me survive. We can't do this alone. OK, and that's a theme of the book. And so my worldwide network cared and showed hope and faith for me. And that's why I always say I am blessed. I am grateful and lucky. Whoa. Blessed. Grateful and happy. <laughs> and happy, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for those words. We really appreciate it. And um, we wish you continued health 
and we wish you success in everything that you are doing right now and especially the success of this book because i know apart from me being a benefit to yourself it's going to be a blessing to so many people out there who are going to read it and that still adds to, to your blessings thank you and for allowing that, me to shine brightly today thank you yes thank you. and maybe uh, we are going to hear uh, in the future in the near future some other miracles more miracles along the way that's what we wish for you as we continue to pray for you thank you thank you yeah so that's uh, that's it for today at book talk uh been your host anthony morore and together with howard brown we are saying bye for now and thank you thank you